Hey everyone, this is Pete with Looking Diecast. Welcome back to our second Skybusters episode. There are quite a few of you who watched the first one and I really appreciate it. So I thought I'd do a second video of 2019 Skybusters. This time I've added some cool photos that I hope you'll like. The pilot has turned on the seatbelt light and we'll be taking off in a few seconds. Put your tray tables up and let's get ready to fly. was a great year for Skybusters. There were over 20 released. Last video I showed two of my favorites, the Stunt Plane and the Dream Chaser. This time I've got some more cool planes and helicopters and a few neat surprises. First up is the Robinson R44 Raven 2, which is an older license casting. The Raven 2 was introduced in 2002 and over time it has become the best selling helicopter in the world. If you're in the market for one and you have the means, they retail for $490,000. This edition is a traffic reporter. The body is really great. Metallic metal blue with silver and red striping. TR logo looks pretty awesome. And it was definitely smart to add the traffic reporter writing on the side to finish that design. The canopy is clear. And you can see that black cockpit pretty well. It has a white tail piece and base. It also has blue landing skids and orange mane and tail rotors. This is a very well done casting, especially that blue paint. Next up is the Space Shuttle Orbiter, which is an old casting. The original came out way back in 1980 when they were still made in England. It appeared just three more times in 83, 92, and 93. Then it got retooled and didn't show up again until 2012, so a long break for the Space Shuttle. There isn't a lot of variation in the Tampo designs through the years, but 2012 was a big exception. It was a glitzy gold stars and stripes edition. I'm definitely on the hunt for that one. This edition, like most, is white with a black base. It has the NASA logo, the American flag, and the name of past shuttles, the Endeavour and the Discovery. The Endeavour shuttle was named after the British ship HMS Endeavour, which was sailed by Captain James Cook on its maiden voyage. The Shuttle Discovery was also named for a James Cook ship, the HMS Discovery, which was commanded by Cook on his final voyage. The Discovery name has been used many times by the Brits for exploration ships, so it's a great fit. If you're a fan of the Shuttle program, good news, the Orbiter will be back in Skybusters lineup in 2020. Now we get into some really fun stuff here. This is the GB. Unfortunately, I don't know much about the history of this casting other than the model number. If you're a Skybusters collector and have information on some of these older castings, it would be awesome if you signed up at the Matchbox Fandom website and added some of that knowledge. The site is great, but it definitely needs some Skybusters contributors. Last video, we checked out the Dream Chaser, and I was really surprised to see that it was licensed. I thought it was a fantasy version of the shuttle. This time, I was surprised by the GB. I'm not an aviation historian. And I'm really just getting interested in it because of these Skybusters. So when I saw the GB, I thought it was a tuned version of a plane. I had no idea the history behind these awesome racing planes. There's quite a bit of information online about these planes, and I won't go into all of the details here. But if you are interested in learning more or seeing some actual footage of these in flight, there's quite a bit out there. Be warned though, there is footage of a pretty horrific crash. So if you're watching with young ones, you may want to consider that. The red and white version is a very accurate copy of the GBR1 that Jimmy Doolittle flew to victory in the 1932 Thompson Trophy race. His top speed was 296 miles per hour. That's a pretty sick speed for a plane in 1932. On this model, you can see the dice on either side of the 11 on the side, just like the original, as well as that GB logo and the NR2100 on the tail and wings. The canopy is tinted and the prop is gray. What a wonderful reproduction of the famous GBR1. The blue plane is the first one that I picked up. This is the GB plane in an old school Skybusters racing tampo design. The body is metallic blue metal and gray plastic. The fuselage has the wild red and gold tip flames. The number 36 is on the side as well as the GB logo and the Skybusters racing logo. The Skybusters Racing logo also appears on the wings. It features a pilot's mask and goggles, checkered flags, and gold stars on what might be that pilot's mask. These little GB planes really won me over. 
I love the Tampo design of the blue model with flames. That was an easy purchase. But now that I know the history behind these very cool racing planes, I'm hoping they make another appearance in the future. Maybe we'll see the yellow and black number four design that I've seen online. The last model I have for this show is the MBX Private Jet. This is a brand new casting for 2019, and honestly, this is a very nice model. The teal fuselage with the white and yellow striping look good. The MBX Airways makes it seem a little more like a commercial jet, but maybe I'm being a little too particular. The MBX with the model number on the tail is a nice look. The wings and body are gray, and the windshield piece is tinted dark. As far as fantasy vehicles go, this one is very realistic. The only exception is the engines themselves. Jet engines are round turbines, and this rectangle shape really wouldn't be seen on an actual plane. It's not a deal breaker though, this is a great looking piece. Another nice selection of planes, helicopters, and that space shuttle from the 2019 Skybusters. I'm totally enjoying collecting these. I have enough planes to do at least one more video on the 2019s, and then hopefully some more 2020s will come my way and we can check those out. Thanks for flying with Looking Diecast, and until I see you next time, enjoy the ride.